This man is one of the most evilest men I have ever had to research. And what he put poor young Kellyanne Bates through is truly, truly terrifying. That someone is that capable of being so evil and doing such horrendous things to a young, vulnerable woman. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Crime Time with me, Charlotte. So thank you so much for joining me here today. If you don't already, please hit that subscribe button. You honestly don't understand how much it means to me. And seeing my channel grow, I've had a bit of time off recently, but I'm here uploading every single Friday. So, today's case, I am putting a massive warning out there. I will again when I decide to subscribe some of what Kelly Ann went through. We do talk about domestic violence. We talk about the gruesome things that James Smith did to poor Kelly Ann. So just a little warning there. If this is not for you, I'll see you next week. But if you're going to stick around to hear Kelly Ann's story, I really, really appreciate it. Let's get straight into the case of Kelly Ann Bates. Kelly Ann Bates was born on the 18th of May 1978 to her mother Margaret and her father Tommy. Margaret said that she was so thrilled to be gifted a baby girl. She already had a son and now she had a beautiful daughter. Later on Kelly Ann would also gain a younger brother and the three siblings were really really close and when growing up Kellyanne was described as being a confident, independent girl who had dreams of becoming a teacher. So Margaret, Kellyanne's mother, was so vocal about bringing up her children to be independent. Margaret said that when she grew up, she was shy and she didn't want her children to be like that, which I completely understand. I was disgustingly shy as a youngster and for my children now, I completely agree. I do not want them to be like that. And they're, and, and they're not. So, And that's what Margaret wanted for her children. So she always taught them to be independent, which she later on goes to say, maybe this was the, the downfall of Kelly because from, from being so young, she was so independent. Margaret said that Kellyanne, she didn't walk. She skipped, she hopped, she dumped because she was just so full of life. Margaret described their family life as extremely close. They had a great family bond and the, and the family told each other everything. Kellyanne had a great relationship with her mum mom and dad. She didn't keep anything from them. Sadly, this blissful family life changed when Kellyanne was just 14 years old. In 1993, Kellyanne Bates was babysitting and this is where she crossed path with James Patterson Smith who was 45 years old. He offered to walk Kelly home from her babysitting job to make sure she got home safely that night. After babysitting James's friend's children. From this first meet, this is where James started the grooming process on 14 year old Kellyanne Bates, who was blissfully unaware of what James was doing to her and James's dark past. Let's take a little look at James and his back life and a little bit about him to get to know who this disgusting creature is. So, from the outlook, people had no suspicions of James. Yep, he was unemployed, he was a divorcee. James was described as being house proud. He was well groomed, he didn't smoke, he didn't drink, he went to church. So yep, a pretty ordinary guy. This is where he was later described as a Jekyll and Hyde character because out the house, he just seemed like this totally normal guy. In the house with women, he was a disgusting abuser, serial abuser. So previously he was married to his wife and that marriage should last for 10 years. And in 1980, this relationship ended in divorce from his wife, Janice Anderson. Throughout the marriage, James was extremely jealous and prone to violence. And he sought out psychiatric help in 1980s to help him. But James couldn't overcome this overpowering emotion that he had. And the couple divorced. 
So lucky for Janice, she walked out of this relationship alive. His other relationships told the same story. He started a relationship with a 20 year old Tina Watson, who he also abused, even though she was pregnant with his own child he still abused her. Tina did manage to escape from the relationship, but also revealed that James had made an attempt to drown her while she was having a bath. In 1982, James started a relationship with a girl called Wendy, who was 15 years old. And Wendy was also a victim of his violence. In one attack, he held her head under the water in the kitchen sink in an attempt to drown her. So we can see a pattern of James's behaviour and he is quite obviously a serial abuser and throughout time has started dating younger and younger girls, probably because they're more easy to manipulate, more vulnerable. And this is what led him to 14-year-old Kellyanne Bates, his next victim. So in 1993, when Kellyanne met James, she kept their relationship a secret from her mum and dad, which is not like Kellyanne. And that was an agreement between the both of them that they would keep this relationship a secret, guessing because of the massive age difference. When Kellyanne turned 16 years old, this is when she told Margaret and Tommy that she had a boyfriend. Kellyanne told her parents that his name was Dave Smith not James Smith, and also failed to tell her parents the massive age difference. Again, this was another influence by James to give her parents a fake name. I don't know whether that's because if her parents started asking around about James, they may get to the truth. This is when James started to call Kellyanne's home, telling her mother he was just a concerned friend. And Kellyanne started stopping out at night during the week on school nights, her mum said that one night turned into two nights turned into three nights. And they didn't want that for Kellyanne. They wanted Kellyanne to be home with them. She was still young and James was making out that he was concerned about Kellyanne's welfare as well. And almost siding with Margaret and Tommy. But I feel like this was a little bit of a, a grooming thing. Like trying to get on their side because he knew what he was doing to their daughter. Margaret and Tommy came home and this is when they saw James Smith swaggering down their stairs. Margaret said seeing James literally made the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. She said that he was so much more older than she expected and he was just so, so smarmy. Apparently he said to her, oh, it's nice to meet you at last. And all she could think at that time was just how to get rid of him. This was not the person that she wanted her daughter to be with. James went on to tell Margaret and Tommy that he was 32 years old. However, they later found out that he was 48 years old and he was a year older than Tommy, Kelly Ann's dad. Margaret absolutely distraught about the relationship between them she just knew that it was not right this age difference was not right but this is when then margaret starts to blame herself like i brought this girl up to be independent and now she's gone for an older guy is that because she is so independent no it was because he is a master manipulator and he is grooming your daughter she is not to blame in any shape or form about this Margaret said that she started to notice how possessive James had become over Kellyanne. She said that he was constantly calling the house, keeping tabs on where Kellyanne was, how long she'd been out for, how long it took her to leave his house to get home, just making sure that she was not going out or seeing anybody else apart from him. But for young Kellyanne, being 14, 15 years old, she probably thought that was really flattering. Oh, this, this older man, he really likes me. He's, he's checking up on me. He's seeing if I'm okay. She probably saw that as flattering. Being young, vulnerable, she probably thought, oh, this guy really likes me. He, just, he wants to keep tabs on me. Where really we know that there's other reasons. That is not the reason. The more and more time Kellyanne spent with James, the more Kellyanne changed. She was not this independent woman that her mum had brought up. She said that her clothes changed. She started wearing darker clothes. 
She didn't wash as much. Her hair was greasy. She just didn't look after herself. And she said that that was not Kellyanne. But that's because she was slowly being broken down by James. He was abusing her. He was isolating her from her family, her friends, and changing the way she was. He had broke her down physically and mentally. Kellyanne arrived home one day and she had the whole side of her face was completely bruised. And when her mum asked her, what has happened to your face, knowing full well that it was James? But Kellyanne covered. She told her mum different stories of what had happened, said that she got jumped, and then she said that she was held down by a couple. None of her stories made sense. And she knew exactly that it was it was James. Margaret then contacted the police and social services, reaching out to anyone for help on this relationship she had so many concerns obviously that this was an abusive relationship that's why she contacted them however because Kellyanne was now 16 years old she was seen as an adult here there was nothing that they could do Margaret then went on to call the domestic violence helpline she wanted some advice and support and she was in told to inform the local doctor surgery because if Kellyanne did turn up at the doctor's surgery with injuries then they could speak to her about you know potential domestic violence however Kellyanne never went to speak to the doctors about any of her injuries her mum said that one day she turned up with a bite mark in her hand and she said that she got it caught in mesh like every single injury that Kellyanne had there was always a story for it when Kellyanne was 17 years old she has left school she moves in with James at his home in Farnville Road in Gorton. Kellyanne tells her parents that she's got a new job, which is a lie, and that she's gonna be spending a lot of time at work because she's gonna be working all hours and even weekends. So they're gonna see her less and less. However, she didn't actually officially tell her parents that she was moving in with James. It was just some lie to cover up. It was just, it was just another lie. Kellyanne was now on the road to be completely isolated from her family by this absolute monster, James Smith. This was all part of his plan to keep Kelly to himself, to stop the questioning about her injuries. And it was also to gain more control of Kellyanne. He now had her full time in his hands. It was reported at the start, Kellyanne was allowed to call her mum once a week check in, make a phone call. But as you can imagine, these phone calls soon stopped and her family got concerned, obviously, that they stopped hearing from Kellyanne. In March 1996, her parents received cards for their wedding anniversary. These cards were not in Kellyanne's writing. And that's when Margaret was like, something is just not right. We have not heard from her. And now we're getting cards from Kellyanne, but they're not even in her handwriting. So this is when she told Tommy, right, enough's enough. We are going to see Kelly. We are gonna go down to that house and find out what is going on. But Tommy stopped her because he was like, let's not go down there, all guns blazing, upsetting Kellyanne, because if you do that, you will lose Kellyanne forever. So she didn't, she didn't go. Kellyanne's brother made an attempt to go down to James's house. When he knocked on the door, James answered and said that Kellyanne was not there. Also, it's been reported that a concerned neighbour also asked about Kellyanne, and apparently she was just briefly shown upstairs at the top window to look out, and that's all people really said that they saw of her from the time that she moved in with James. Okay, guys, so this is just a little warning. I'm going to start talking about the murder of Kellyanne. On the 17th of April, 1996, James Patterson Smith walked into Gorton Police Station, calmly telling the police that he accidentally killed his girlfriend when they'll have an argument and she drowned in the bath. When the police turned up at James's house and saw Kellyanne's blood smeared all over the walls, they knew that this clearly was absolutely no accident. A month before Kellyanne's death, she was subjected to absolute horrific torture at the hands of James Smith. She was kept bound and tied to a radiator. She was starved and she was scalped. She also had 
burns all over her body from hot irons and boiling hot water. It was reported that Kellyanne had shattered kneecaps, her hands and her feet had also been crushed. He had used knives, pruning shears, forks, several pairs of scissors, a spade to harm poor Kellyanne. This is the most distressing thing that I'm gonna say is that her eyes were also gouged out and this was reported to have happened at least three weeks before she had died. It's also reported that he had stabbed Kellyanne in her empty eye sockets once he had removed her eyes. I mean, that is just, that is like literally gut-wrenching. That is sickening. I, I generally can't imagine, and I'm sure you feel the same, like how scared she must have been how much pain was she feeling when I watched the documentary um, when her father was talking he was saying like there's a part of your brain when it reaches too much pain it just shuts off and you don't feel anything and he really hopes that that's what happened to Kellyanne that she just got to a certain point where she just didn't feel this pain and I hope to god that that is the case because otherwise that is excruciating agony the coroner reported that she sustained approximately 150 separate injuries in total, separate, none of them were the same, 150 total separate injuries. James then carried Kellyanne to the bath and that is where he drowned her, which ended her life. James Smith was arrested on charges of murder, however this is something he actually denied because he blamed Kellyanne, saying that her injuries were self-inflicted. He said that Kellyanne caused those injuries herself, framing him. When James was asked about why her eyeballs were removed, he said that she dared him to do it and taunted him about his dead mum. I honestly don't understand what was going through this man's head, because he obviously thought he was going to get away with this. He's come up with this crap story he's walked into the police station and pretty much put himself on a plate i honestly think that in his own head he thought i'm gonna get away with this on the 19th of november 1997 49 year old james smith was sentenced at manchester court here is where kellyanne's family heard for the first time about james's abusive past the abusive relationships and former ex-girlfriends came forward and told the court told the jury about how abusive James was and how he had tried to drown them like he did Kellyanne the jury only took one hour to find James Patterson Smith guilty of murder and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. So Kellyanne's parents said that was a massive slap in the face. They couldn't believe that he got 20 years for everything that they he had done to their daughter. That was not enough time. But as you know, here in the UK, the justice system, 20 years is like life. After the trial, the jury were offered professional counselling to help them deal with what they saw, what they heard. Kellyanne's body, what she was subjected to, and every single jury member took up the offer of counselling. That's how horrific this case is. Kellyanne Bates was laid to rest on the day before her 18th birthday, on the 17th of May 1996, where her family and friends, and people that the family didn't even know, come and paid their respects, because absolutely everybody was shook. This shook a community. Nobody could imagine that someone was this capable of doing something especially a guy that they had seen a churchgoer james was eligible for parole but in 2023 this was denied because he is still a high risk which is good let's keep him there i believe that he will literally spend the remainder of his life in prison he is 74 years old now 74 75 so i believe that this is where he stay who will stay and where he should stay to rot because what he put Kellyanne through and those other women it is just dis disgusting so have you heard about this case guys my heart honestly goes out to Kellyanne's family I mean sadly her mum Margaret has passed and is no longer with us but she is now with Kellyanne and yeah honestly it was so hard researching this it was I just just 
I can't imagine what clearly I went through. But anyway, that is it for today, guys. And I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate you hearing Kellyanne's story. And yeah, I'll see you again next week. Thank you so much. Bye.